Hello, my name is Lewis, and I'm coming to you with the Sunday School lesson for October 28th, and this lesson is entitled, The Marriage of Isaac. And the text will be coming from Genesis chapter 24, verses 12 through 21, and 61 through 67. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me Godspeed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out who was born of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the, into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And Rebekah arose and her damsels and they, this is verse 61, excuse me. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Laharoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when he, she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And today's lesson, uh, let me just pray for a second. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the example of this marriage, the marriage of Isaac. Uh, we ask that you open up our understanding to any little nuggets of truth, anything that can help us in our life, in our walk, in our marriages even, and even in our courtship, in our finding a wife. For those who are not married, Lord God, give us wisdom in Jesus' name. The key verse will be coming from chapter 24, verse 61. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. So let us just begin. This is a very, very clear-cut uh, verses verse of Scripture. There's nothing very deep um, I, I, I'm, and, you know, I say that very cautiously because, you know, there are nuggets here and there. Uh, and if and if you, any one of you wanted to really go into depth uh, as far as, you know, the places where they were and all that, all that stuff is is all good. Uh, let us just this this think about this man who is a servant. He's the servant of Isaac. Uh, he also says that he's the servant of Abraham. And so, you know, he's been in the family for all these years, even uh, at the time of his father, of Isaac's father, Abraham. And so it says very clear that he is the, he, the Lord of God, the, of my master, Abraham. And so he calls himself, you know, a servant of Abraham and recognizes the Lord God, you know, the Adonai Elohim, which is the God that Abraham recognizes out of all the gods in the world, lowercase g-o-d-s, this servant followed not only just his, his master Abraham, 
but he also understood that his master Abraham followed God, the, Lord, the Lord God, Elohim, the one God. And so he says he prays to that Lord, that Lord God, because he knows that that God is a, is a God that answers prayers. How does he know this? Because he's seen it. it uh, he, uh, his master testified and witnessed of it. He witnessed his master praying to the Lord God and getting his, his wishes, his prayers answered. Not only that, but also receiving a promise, which we uh, covered in Sunday school uh, lessons past. And so this master being in the family for so long has witnessed the blessings of Abraham and the blessings of the God of Abraham upon this family and knew right well who to pray to. And so this is a really awesome, um, you know, piece to take from it. That this ma this uh, servant was able to pray to God also. So does it matter if you're the master or the servant in a house that is ran by God? No. God hears the master and he hears the servant. He hears the rich and he hears the poor. It doesn't matter what status in the community or what status in your country or what status in your home. God will hear you if you believe in him. And so I think that this, this servant... Um, utilized a faith on the inside of him. And this is a, a subject that's gone, uh, that I've been um, a part uh, part of for quite some time, even on, uh, you know, on Facebook and YouTube discussions, where people actually think that faith is a gift that God gives to people. Faith is not the gift. Faith is something that all men are capable of doing. Otherwise, God could not ask of men have faith and believe because every man has the ability to have faith it is it is the, the onus is on the man or the woman to utilize the faith that is on the inside of them whether they're going to believe in the god you know god or not so we have faith every day we have faith in the cars that we drive we have faith in the seats that we sit in we have faith in the people that we love we have faith in, in the job that's going to be there. And to some degree, we don't have faith in some of those things as well. And so the choice is always present with human beings to, to either turn off faith or turn on faith. Because faith is a component of our being. And so I, I wanted to put that out there because... A lot of people actually believe in some kind of doctrine that faith is a gift from God. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says, by grace are you saved through faith. How are you saved? By grace. But how, through, through you know, how do you uh, acquire said grace? By your faith. So whose grace do we acquire? God's grace. It's God's free gift. But how do we acquire that free gift? Through our faith. We have to turn on our faith and turn to towards him and actually utilize our faith. And in utilizing our faith, we actually do things and not do things. We actually put away things and we actually take on things. We actually take up our cross and we actually leave the world. We actually pick up that plow and start working and don't look back or we look back and return to the vomit. And so there's always a choice there because Jesus died on the cross. And I'm sorry to take this tangent, but because Jesus did die on the cross, he indeed gave us another choice. And that choice opened up the idea that we can have faith and believe in God for life. As uh, as opposed to not having faith in anything or faith in other things that will lead to death. Because everything else led to death. Our life, if we ran its course, would lead to death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died on that cross to give us an available grace. That grace is available to all who will believe. Will everybody believe? Absolutely not. Everybody will not believe. 
And so it is to those who believe. It, and in the Old Testament, the, the prophet says, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And so we have the answer to that question if we believe in God, in Jesus Christ. It is us. I believe in, you know, God. Who had, uh, and I believe in the report of the Lord. And I believe, and I have, and, and it has been manifested to me, the arm of the Lord. And the arm of the Lord is Jesus Christ. It is, it is God manifesting flesh to save me. So I'm sorry I took that tangent, but I just wanted to go off this, this servant's faith which he turned on because he saw his master, Abraham, you know, receiving messages from God talking about, I'm going to have a son. God said, I'm going to be a, a father of many nations. And so for many years, after 25 years, this man waited and this servant who knew Abraham was looking at Abraham's life like, man, this man's a fool. Either that or he just feared and just wanted to keep his job and just wanted to make good with his master. But the, the one thing he came out with at the end, you know, for sticking with Abraham all this time is that he actually saw the promises of God fulfilled for Abraham. He saw a miraculous thing, a 100 year old man and a 90 year old woman give birth to a child his master Isaac, and after all these years taking care of Isaac, Isaac must have been a uh, uh, um, uh, young adult, possibly in his twenties, possibly even in his thirties. But uh, he was he was old enough to take on a wife, and this master, this this servant, was looking for his master for a damsel for him because there were no women in his old household uh, that he could take. He needed to take a woman from someone else's household. And it was his uncle Nahor's household, his great uncle. So let me continue. Um, verse 13, behold, I stand here by the well of water. And this is the man praying to God, who's having faith in God now, praying to God for an, an answer and for a solution for his problem. And his problem is I, I need to find Isaac a wife. I need to find Isaac a, a, a woman, a damsel that he can hold on to and take on and be relieved and consoled because something had just happened. And so he says, I behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Now he already knows that there are going to be women coming to the, this well, but he wants the right woman to come to the well for his master. And so he leaves, leaves it up to God to weed out all these women in this in the surrounding area and possibly say, you know, hold back some of these women. You know, oh, you know, I could just imagine that women come all, all the time to this well at the same time. They con uh, congregate around this well to get water for their for their little towns, their little hamlets. And so when when you think about that, what could have God what could God have done? to hold off any of these other women and allow Rebecca to be the first one. He could have said, oh, I forgot to one girl, to one girl, she would say, oh, I forgot to pin my hair up. And she goes back and she pins her hair up. That makes her five minutes late. So you understand what I'm getting at when I say that. Oh, I forgot my, my buckets. Man, how am I going to walk all this way and forget my buckets? That, that makes her about 20 minutes late. And so... This is not so far-fetched when you think about what God could do in order to fulfill this prayer. And so I'm just putting it out there. This is all uh, speculation on my part. All I know is that when, when he prayed this, the right woman came. And whether it was because his prayer, and I, I believe it was because his prayer. God hears his prayer. He actually believed. He had faith. Um, the just shall live by faith. Let me continue. And so he tells God, I'm by the well and the daughters of men of the city come to draw water. Let it come to pass. Now he's saying, please, Lord, let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say, drink and I will give thy camels drink also. That's the, the key thing. Perhaps he did see other women there and he asked other women. He said, oh, can I get some drink? 
and they gave her and gave him drink, but did not offer him drink to the camels. What he was looking for was a, a woman that was hospitable, that was kind, that that had a, a, a generous and consoling and and, and you know um, how do you say it? a generous heart, a person who just gave out of the kindness of her own heart. And so we see that in his prayer, what kind of woman he was looking for. And so, and I also leave it, leave it up to conjecture also that maybe some women came before Rebecca, but did not meet the criteria of his, his uh, prayer. So maybe these women came, there was like two or three women that came before him, before Rebecca and said, okay, I'll give you some water but denied water to the camels. Like, oh, I ain't got no time for, to give your, uh, your camels water. I got to go. So they wasn't the ones. But if that didn't happen and Rebecca was first, then it happened according to his prayer. She also offered the, the Isaac's, um, Isaac and his servant's camels water also to drink. I pray thee that I may drink and she also, and she shall say drink and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. He's, he's praying, he's interceding. This is another um, intercessory prayer. He's interceding on behalf of his master. And isn't it something that we should do for our jobs and who we work for? When we go to work, shouldn't we be praying for our bosses, for our employers, for the companies that we work for, for the companies that we actually uh, divest in? And also, not just the companies, but even the community in which we live, pray for the community. Like, this just is another idea of intercession. Because I'm part of this family, I'm, I know I'm going to be blessed if I, if I bring them what they need. If I'm blessing them and he's already, he's already uh, enacting something that God told Abraham, I will bless them that bless you. And so this servant is now being blessed by the Lord in giving the, in giving this servant exactly what he prayed for the way he prayed for it, for the will of God. And because this is what he wanted, God wanted Rebecca to be with Isaac in order to create a son, his name would be later called Jacob. Of course, he had Esau as well, but Jacob is the intended son before anything in the mind of God. And so the mind of God is at work. The will of God is at work. This marriage is according to the will of God. This woman is according to the will of God. And this man is praying in the will of God. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving glory to God the Father by him. Do and, and not only that, abide in my word and my and my words abide in you. You can ask anything in my name and I will do it. Not only that, but if you ask anything according to my will, I will give it to you. And so this man came out of his face with an intercessory prayer heart for his master and made a prayer and was very specific and he got exactly what he wanted. And it wasn't for himself. It wasn't selfish either. But in, in return, this man would be blessed because he was a faithful servant and kind enough to pray for his master. And so he goes the extra mile. And I'm sure Isaac must have said, look, servant, thank you so much for finding me this fine woman. This woman is awesome. This woman is gorgeous. This woman is fair to look upon. This woman is kind and sweet. However, did you come across? Now, of course, the man told him everything, but I'm sure that he was very appreciative. Isaac was very appreciative. And so with I servant Isaac, oh, and, and, but she and let the same be she that has appointed has thou has appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou has showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking. Now, this kind of negates my previous um, my previous argument that possibility that there were other women that came and he may, may have said to them like, oh, can I get some water? And they gave him water, but they didn't feed the, 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 the horse, the camels. And so this kind of, this right here can actually negate that argument, but I'm still leaving it up there. I don't know. But 
as soon as he was finished speaking, as soon as he was finished praying, he says, um, when he was done speaking, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor. Nahor was Abraham's brother. And so, remember, Nahor did not go with Abraham and Terah to the land of Har to, to Haran towards, you know, uh, Canaan land. And so Nahor was where he was, and the servant went back into the country to go find a damsel at this particular well in that country of this family. And so he found th this well and, and found a woman that would, would eventually come, and her name was Rebekah. Verse 16, and the damsel was very fair to look upon. She was gorgeous. She was drop dead gorgeous. If the Bible says she was fair to look upon, you know, we, we also see other characters that the Bible is very, very um, honest about. And, you know, talking about Leah, you know, Jacob's, uh, Jacob's wife, who he did not intend on marrying and did not love as much as his, uh, his uh, Rachel, his, his beloved. So, we see that Leah had a weak eyed and I guess was not as fair as, you know, Rachel, um, as Rachel. But let's go back to the story. And so this woman, Rebecca, she was fine. She was and she was um, she was like a Victoria's Secret model going down a runway in the desert. Fine. And she had beads of sweat coming down and, and she must have looked just like, bam. But she covered herself before she saw. I, but that's besides the point. Let's get, let's go go forward. <coughs> she was fair to look upon, and she was a virgin, meaning neither had any man known her, meaning she did not have sex at all in any kind of way. And so she um. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And so she went down into the well. And so it, obviously the well was like in like an embankment where they would go down to and they come back up from out of that in area with the well, with the water. And so when she came back up, he met her along the way. And the servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, drink, my Lord. And she hasted. Now she was in a hurry about it. Now, she just came up from the well. She could have said, look, I'm, I need to get home. I, I got a family to actually bring this water to. I have my own sheep and cattle and, and camels that I have to you know, do, tend to. But she actually said, okay, here, very fast, hospitable, and, and very quick with the hospitality. And so she said, drink, my Lord. She hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. So she came out of her own face, not hearing this prayer, not knowing this man, not knowing God's will. But it was it was in her heart and perhaps God put it in her heart to actually do that. And that's another thing. Perhaps God staved away the other women and only she came. And then when she came, he put it in her heart. Remember, a lot of things that we do in our in in our day to day actions sometimes is motivated by the love and by the care of God in our life. Sometimes we don't even think nothing of it and we just help somebody. And when we do that, it is automatically that God was using us for that moment. And so we should always be um, ready and apt to help somebody in, in that's in need. So let me go forward. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will, drink, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. So God may have put that in her heart to do, and she did it. And that was an a answer to his prayer earlier. Verse 20, and she hasted again. Verse 18 says that she hasted. And verse 20 says that she hasted. Everything that he had prayed for, the, what, whoever the damsel was to do, she did. Rebecca did by name. Rebecca hasted to give him water and hasted to give his camels water, meaning without a shadow of doubt, this is the one. So if there was like any hesitation in any other woman, yeah, I'll give you some water. 
And then, oh, okay, you know what? It looks like if camels are thirsty too hard, I guess I'll give them. Uh, and if she was like that, I think that would have been like, is this the one? Because she seems kind of like lazy and don't want to really uh, help me out. And I don't want nobody like that for my master. That's not what I intended. But she hates it. And so this is something that, that was direct and to the point, and she fulfilled both those things. They were requirements in his mind for the Lord to answer his prayer. And so, and this is not going to happen, you know, I like how people, you know, take things like this and try to do it for themselves. Well, if this person does this and that and the other, then I know it's the Lord. They, they do like a fleecing arrangement, you know, what Gideon did, where he put the fleece down and he asked, oh Lord, if there's dew on this fleece, the next morning, if there's no dew on this fleece, the next morning, no dew on this fleece, the next morning, and do it like three or four times. Look, how many times I got to do this for you, for you to believe that I did it and that it was my will for you to have it. Just believe me. Don't fleece. Don't do no fleece prayers. And this is what he did too. But, you know, I'm not saying that God won't, won't uh, answer those type of prayers, but don't try to do this. Just believe God. And if, if God don't want to give it to you, know his will, know his voice, uh, you know, you know, exercise your discernment in the spirit. But again, this is what happened with the servant, the servant who was not as um, not as uh, re related to God as his master Abraham was. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him and Abraham was considered the friend of God. And so anybody who would bless Abraham would be blessed, you know, because of that blessing. And so the the servant took took it upon himself to do that, but he did not have a relationship as his master did. And I don't even think Isaac had a relationship as Abraham did, but God was working with that, working on that. One thing's for sure, this servant found out for sure whose side uh, he was on when when he when he prayed to God. And so she ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And again, she did she did that until they were done drinking. Verse 21, and the man wondering at her, he was like looking at her like, wow, this is the one. I can't believe this. And isn't that something? We pray for some, for something and God actually give it to us. And we're just like looking at it, beholding it. Behold. Look at what God is doing. And it was like, I can't believe that God just did that. But this is what he's wondering. He's wondering at her, held his peace, like, wow, because he knew what he prayed earlier. And, and what he prayed earlier was manifest in her right now in real time. And to wit, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And so even after praying this thing and getting exactly what he prayed for, he was still like, is this it? And he fell in the, under the same thing that Gideon fell under when he was doing the fleece prayer. Anyway, let's jump to verse 61, the marriage of Isaac. And Rebecca arose. Now, this is after, you know, they go back and forth with the family and they, they pack up their things. They, they make certain that this is, uh, this is a good idea. And, you know, Nahor's family is all fine with it. And Rebecca says, OK, I'm going. Let's go. 61 says, and Rebecca arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man, and the servant took Rebecca and went his way. And so mission was accomplished. He was wondering in verse 21 whether his journey was prosperous. Verse 61 says, indeed, he found what he was looking for. His journey was prosperous, but his, the prosperous part didn't come until the reaction of, in verse 67. And Isaac came from the way, from the way of the well Laharoi, Lahairoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. So Isaac was, you know, in a moment of prayer. He was meditating, meditating about what we don't know. He was probably just having a quiet time. But one thing's for sure, he probably learned from Abraham how to pray and listen for God and to look for God's guidance in his life. And so perhaps he was still thinking about his mother 
and his mother was heavily on his mind and he was meditating on God for consolation. And perhaps this consolation was something that God saw and was in real time answering without him lifting up a, a, the vocabulary to ask for it. And so uh, Isaac got what what he needed at this moment from God and did not re even realize it until the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes from where she was coming. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She came off the camel. Now, camels are very tall. And so she, you don't just jump off of a camel. She gets the camel to stoop down upon his knees and to park his butt. And she lighted off. She came off the camel. Verse 65, for she had said unto thy, to the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. And so the master that she knew he was talking about was not Master Abraham, but was Master Isaac. And so she knew exactly who she was being betrothed to um, as far as, you know, by name, Isaac. She knew that that was Isaac who he was calling master. Even though in the beginning of the lesson, we see that the God of my master, the prayer that he was praying, he was praying to the God of Abraham, not the God of Isaac, his master, even though it is, you know, Isaac's God as well. But God was not in relationship like that with Isaac at this point. <coughs> That's in, that was a work in progress, just like Abraham was a progr progressive work and got to a point where he became a friend of God. And it was it was very, very telling through his life, through the blessings of his life. Let me continue. Uh, and so she lighted off the camera. For she had said unto her, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? So she, he saw her, but could not distinguish what this was. He just saw camels in the distance. And she saw a single person in the distance. And it was, it was uh, them catching eyeballs for the very first time. She saw his form. This is a very like romantic, you know, romantic little scene here. And I know the, the Bible is not, you know, like it's not trying to be di directorial. But I think um, I think if you were to imagine if this was done in the movies, you would see, you would see like there's music being played in the back. Da, 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 after such a long journey. And then they see them, you know, gazing across the, the way. And so Isaac sees the camel, but cannot discern, but is like trying to figure out what's going on. And he's walking towards the towards them and still doesn't know what's going on. And she sees the man walking towards them and doesn't know who that man is. And so they don't even see each other and who they are. Like, you know, they can't see their form, their face and what they look like. And, and their their visage and, and they, they don't see the their beauty of anything any beauty they can see you know if they were up close and so all they see is like a, a far off form and so they're coming towards each other and they're stuck and she's like wondering this may be the man that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with and he doesn't know who this woman is or who these people are and he kind of figures oh that look, looks like my servant and those look like my camels but who are these women and who is this woman coming off the camel? So he probably sees all that, but still not discerning. <clears throat> For she has said unto the servant, what a man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant has said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. This, this speaks would be betrothed, could just not, you know, cannot show her herself, but had to veil herself. And it would be, it would be, um... It would be it would go against their custom for a man to see the woman, to, you know, to see the woman or for even for her to see through her veil, the man, you know, in his full form. And so they had to it had to be like veiled. And that all that all that all means something. I'm not getting into that. Excuse me. My phone keeps moving side to side. <laughs> and so. And the servant has said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. Verse 66, and the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. 
Now, after these, they all approached each other. Excuse me. So they approached each other, and we come to verse 60 says, The servant told Isaac all things that he had done. Now, everything that he had done, meaning he went out with the intention to find his master, someone for him to spend the rest of his life, and perhaps even told him his heart for his master. Now, I, I believe that he looked at his master's need in his time of, uh, of, of bereavement and said, Look, I know exactly what you need. I know exactly what you require in this time of your life and that's somebody to console you and nobody can, can console you like a woman can console you like a wife can console you I'm looking for a woman that's wife material and this is what I asked the Lord and the Lord gave me exactly what I asked for she she did exactly what I had asked for not only did she give me water but she also gave the camels water showing such great hospitality and, and such love and generosity towards me and to the camels that if she could do that for, for me and for them, she can do that for my master. And not only that, she was fine and she was a virgin. And not only that, she was of, you know, Nahor's family, which was perfect. And so all this came together and he told her all these things in verse 67. In verse 67 is the last verse. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And so when he heard when he heard all the whole story of what his servant did, he 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 must have said, Well, wow, this is amazing, awesome, thank you. And she looks she is beautiful. And and I really appreciate this. And he really took her and fell in love with her and took her as his wife into his mother's tent, meaning into his living quarters and made her his wife in that tent. So I, I know a lot of you are adults and you know exactly what went on in the tent for him to make her his wife. And so in those days, the consummation of marriage is, you know, sexual intercourse. This is what happened. They got down, they got busy, and he loved her, and I'm sure that he was appreciative to his servant for what he has done, and he also felt comforted, according to the scripture, comforted after his mother's death. So we see what was going on, what the scenario was surrounding this, this time frame that Isaac was not feeling so hot because he lost his mom. And look, a lot of people, who are on YouTube may have lost their mom. I can't even imagine losing my mother right now. But if that was to happen, I can only I can only imagine what great hurt he was feeling and what great emptiness he was feeling as well, not feeling his mother's love. And remember what love he had with his mother, what attachment, you know, concerning the things that was happening between the families. Uh, uh, Sarah cleaved on to her son Isaac because of the things that happened with Ishmael and Hagar and the, 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 the tensions that their families had and she was very protective of her son knowing that this child was the, the promise and was happy about this child and so you can see that there was a, a great attachment between mother and son and son and mother in this, in this scenario and so when she was lost he must have felt a great chasm uh, you know, between him and and such a hole in his heart that, you know, he was very hurt. But when his servant did this, you know, life is life and things, time heals all wounds and th his servant did what he did. That, that action kind of filled his heart and this wife who was so generous, according to this servant's, you know, liking, was generous and hospitable and was the kind of person as wife material to fill that gaping hole in Isaac's heart. And he fell in love with her and she fell in love with him. I believe that it was a mutual thing and that this marriage of Isaac was in the will of God, you know, to go forward and to consummate all the will of God and to bring on eventually Esau and Jacob. 
Jacob being, you know, called I, uh, Ishmael, um, Ishmael, Israel later on in life, who would be the chosen one of God to go forward, to, to bring forth the seed to generation to generation up until Jesus. And so that was the lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's the marriage of Isaac. And again, that key verse was Re Rebecca arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the, camsel, the, the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. God bless you all, and I hope you were blessed by that. Amen.